Good morning and welcome to worship on this day of Pentecost, a day when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds and lives. My name is Chris Beckman. I'm the corporate chaplain for Ebenezer, and we're glad you're with us for worship on this day and glad you're part of this community of faith. Please join us as we begin our worship today with our opening hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth. Please join us. now continue our worship with the opening dialogue. Alleluia! The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Alleluia! With tongues of fire, the Spirit kindles the apostles' zeal. They declare in new tongues the wonderful works of God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Alleluia, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your joyful people with your love. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us now pray together the prayer of the day. Please join me. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you sent upon the disciples the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, look upon your church and open our hearts to the power of the Spirit. Kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our lives for service to your kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel lesson for this Pentecost Sunday is from the book of John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 to 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met, were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Here ends our Gospel reading. Will you join with me in prayer? May the words of my mouth 
and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. I got a gift this past weekend, one that has kept me busy for some time and has given me perhaps a beautiful connection to Jesus and his life. One of my friends happened on a load of hand-sawn cedar boards. And cedar, as you may know, is about as quaint and difficult to come by as redwood nowadays. But it's so beautiful and it's so desired because redwood, like cedar, is one of the woods that can be left outside and is impervious more so to rain and weather and to bugs than something, say, oak or pine or walnut. So I happened on this partial load of hand-sawn cedar boards. And some of these were incredible pieces. They were actually four by tens. And for those of you who know your lumber and wood, these were actual four by tens. If you were actually to buy a four by 10 in the store at Menards, you would get something that was three and a half inches thick and nine and a quarter inches wide. These boards were actually four inches thick and 10 full inches wide. The board that I had, I could barely lift. It was so big and so heavy and really almost quite priceless. In fact, my friend just had them sitting outside and when I saw them, I was like, oh, they are gonna make the most beautiful benches to put in someone's garden. And right there on the spot, she made me a deal. She said, I will give you the wood if you make me a bench. <laughs> and this wood uh, was not the perfected wood you see in your house. It was better. It had all the knots and the gouges from the saws and the axes. It had bark that was still on some of the corners. It had all of the character and the beauty that so many of us desire. I only wish that I had the craftsmanship that was really worthy of these pieces of wood. But I did my best and I cut the wood and I nailed it and glued it and used lag bolts and put it together into a bench the best I could. In fact, I was able to make four benches out of that wood. And they all have this incredible character of color and shape and solidity, along with all of the perfections from those persons who made it, namely me. As a Christian and a follower of Jesus, we all know that Jesus' profession was as a carpenter. And I have an imagination that even though I had saws and drills and all of the best possible equipment, that my finished projects probably came nowhere near to the quality and the beauty of Jesus himself. In fact, I'd probably be embarrassed. But as we gather on this Pentecost, as we think of the disciples who are gathered in the upper room, which we probably believe was the place where they had the Last Supper, it was a place where Jesus and the disciples probably knew the proprietor, and they had this space that was set aside for them. And where they went after Jesus was crucified and had risen from the dead because they were afraid. They were afraid of the religious authorities. And so in the same place where they sat for the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, they gathered again on this day of Pentecost because they were afraid and the doors were locked. There's some debate about scholars about whether the disciples sat on benches and had a table, sort of like the Last Supper picture that most of us have in our houses, and the type of bench I tried to make. Or, more likely, there weren't benches. And if there was a table, the table was maybe only a foot off the floor. You see, the tradition in the Middle East was often that you sat on the floor and on carpets and pillows, and you reclined 
And you had a very short table, or the food was on the floor, even, with all of the people gathered around. I'm going to think that they had benches, because I built one myself. And knowing Jesus as the carpenter, he maybe insisted on having a bench. The point of the story, though, and as you may not even have heard, is this is our Pentecost story. Those of you who know your faith might be wondering, well, where are the tongues of fire? I thought there were tongues of fire on Pentecost. Well, those of you who know your Bibles know that there are four Gospels. Three of them, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are called the Synoptic Gospels. They are really closely uh, met together. In fact, they use a lot of the same sources when they write their stories. The Gospel of John, which is where our Gospel today comes from, is completely separate. It has some of the same traditions and stories, but really has a different take on the biblical message. Today, we get the Pentecost story. But rather than the tongues of fire coming down on top of the disciples' head, Outside, while they're preaching, as they are in Matthew and Mark and Luke, today Jesus breathes on them the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that when I was telling and reading the gospel? Jesus came into the locked room, the upper room, and he showed the disciples his hands and his side. And he said, peace be with you. And then he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. You see, the Pentecost story, dear friends, is of Jesus living among the disciples, being crucified, rising from the dead, and then being with the disciples for a period of time, 40 days, we say, in the church. And then Jesus ascends to heaven, and we wait for 10 more days for the Holy Spirit to come. You see, our faith is really mostly dependent on the Holy Spirit. Jesus has departed from this world. And the way we know Jesus and the way we know the Father is through the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you heard the text, he breathed on them. But in this time of pandemic, that's probably sounding really odd to us today when we're usually wearing masks and face shields, and we don't want to be breathing on each other. And here is Jesus coming to his disciples who are afraid and scared and quarantined, and he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. You see, friends, the point of Pentecost is the disciples are afraid. They think that they are going to experience the same thing that Jesus himself experienced, death on a cross. And they haven't gotten the courage yet or the strength or the insight to go out into the world and to do the work that Jesus gave them to do. So Jesus comes to them on Pentecost, says, peace be with you, gives them the Holy Spirit, and then sends them out into the world to continue the work that Jesus himself began so long ago. Maybe those are words for us today as well. I hope the story sounds familiar to you. Here we are at Pentecost. We have been waiting for the Spirit to come, to connect us to Jesus again. And we are quarantined. We are just like the disciples 2,000 years ago. We are in our upper rooms. And even more so, we don't have the rest of the disciples around us. We are by ourselves and lonely and scared. And into that void comes the Holy Spirit to bring life and breath to the words of Jesus. I will not leave you alone. I will send the Advocate, the Parousia, the Holy Spirit, to come and intercede for me. And then maybe these words especially are on our minds and our hearts, where Jesus says to the disciples, I send you out. You are afraid. You are frightened. 
The world out there seems dangerous, but I am sending you out to preach the message of God's love, of forgiveness, of openness, of welcome to all God's people. You see, one of the mysteries and the beauties of Christianity is that our faith and these words of openness and forgiveness are for everyone. No exceptions. Jewish people, Gentiles, people of all faith backgrounds, all are loved and cared for by the one same God. Now we are in a time, dear friends, where we are in quarantine. We're frightened like the disciples. And now we're starting to hear words that go out, <laughs> go back into the world. Start doing some of the things that we once did. And many of us are frightened. And we're wondering how to take those steps into the world because they don't feel safe and they don't feel secure. And maybe especially this Pentecost, we hear the words of Jesus, I will not leave you alone. I will send you out into the world to preach my message of love and acceptance for all God's people. The disciples, I think, said, I'm not ready. <laughs> Don't send me. But Jesus did say they're ready. And Jesus did send them. And dear friends, we are in that same place today. We're not ready. We're frightened. We're concerned that we're going into the world alone. But Jesus' promise is still true for us today. I send you into the world with the Spirit to never leave you alone, to give you strength and courage as you preach my message of love and acceptance and hope. Maybe the image of my old bench uh, is actually a good one for today. You see, amazing to me, those benches are actually starting to turn into something beautiful. And they're beautiful not because they're perfect. One of my struggles is I, I deal with perfectionism and I can never make things as beautifully as they are in my head. But if you could see these benches that I built, they have knotty wood everywhere. They are rough and haven't been sanded. There's shaggy bark on some of the ends. And if you sit on the bench, there's just a light little wobble in the passage. But they're solid and heavy. And I put more screws into that wood than Menards had. And now my wife wants to put it out into the garden to face the elements to be rained on and snowed on and sat on. And I said to her, honey, I'm not ready. I can't send my bench out into the garden where it's going to get rained on and snowed on. And it's going to turn gray and it's going to get sat on. And she said to me in words that ring true this Pentecost, honey, that's what it's made for. It's made to be rough, and it's made to have weathering, and it's made to have imperfections, and it's made to be a little wobbly on one side, and it's made to be solid and stable. And she said, it's made that way because it's made just like we are. You see, the beauty of our Christian life and faith is that Jesus looks at us and says, ah, Chris is a little wobbly, a little rough. He's got some issues. There's a lot of knots here and there, a lot of imperfections. But I'm going to send him out into the world with his humanity and imperfections and struggles and concerns to meet the weather and the life and the faith. And the reality, dear friends, is that is actually what makes this so beautiful. You see, the bench that I built is beautiful 
especially because it shows all of the worries and all of the knots and all of the bark. Not because it was perfect, but because it's beautiful in all of its wonderful imperfections. You see, Jesus sends us out just like that. Sends us out like the disciples who were this mishmash of fisher people and carpenters and tax collectors. Messed up people. But as we go out and we weather and we join the world and are rained and snowed upon, we actually gain that beautiful patina that makes us such valuable people in the world. So hold on, dear friends. Gird up your loins, get ready to go out, prepare yourself in all of our beautiful, wonderful perfections, imperfections, because the Spirit goes with us. And all of these things that make us who we are is what makes us beautiful in the eyes of God. Amen. Let us now sing together our hymn of the day on this Pentecost Sunday. Nearer, my God, to Thee. Please join us. Let us now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all Christian people, that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who at this season are receiving in baptism your Son's new life by water and the Spirit. Dying with Christ, may they know the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who we know and love, both near and far, 
May their eyes be open to see the glory of the risen Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer pain and anguish. Grant them the faith to reach out towards the healing wounds of Christ and be filled with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Unite us with them in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Join our voices, we pray, Lord our God, to the songs of all your saints in proclaiming that you give us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Open your hearts now to God and receive the blessing. May Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of Pentecost. And may he protect you against all sin. Amen. Through the resurrection of his Son, God granted us healing. May he fulfill his promises and bless you with eternal life. Amen. You have mourned for Christ's sufferings. Now you celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May you come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this day, and we pray God's blessings upon you during this season of Pentecost yet ahead. And now let us be dismissed. Go in peace, serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let us sing together our closing hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Hast thou not seen?